A man cheated on three girls simultaneously, so they team up to make him pay. Welcome back to Flix Recap. My name is Luke Pelletier, and today we're covering the 2014 rom-com The Other Woman. Before we start, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and of course subscribe to Flix Recap if you dig the breakdown. And as a quick reminder, this video contains spoilers, so you have been warned. Let's do it. The movie starts with a man and a blonde bombshell in some tongue tango action. Here we meet Carly and Mark. Mark is courting Carly, taking her on romantic dates, and getting her sweet gifts which clearly seem to work. He seems eager to meet Carly's father and her friends to celebrate their eight-week anniversary, but Carly's skeptical, feeling that it's too soon to take such a leap in their relationship. Fast forward to a few days later and Mark is waking up. However, he's not in Carly's house, but in his matrimonial bed. It turns out that Mark is married to Kate, a socially awkward and naive wife who's always eager to please and believes that she's happily married to a faithful man. Oh, <laughs> Kate. We learn that Carly works as a lawyer in a top firm with an intrusive personal assistant, Lydia, who's more interested in Carly's love life than in putting in the work. Just then, Kate calls Mark to remind him of dinner with his brother-in-law, Phil, that night. However, Mark had already agreed to meet Carly's father that same night. To escape this issue, Mark lies to Carly saying that he has a leak in the basement at his house in Connecticut that he needs to attend to urgently. Carly is furious about the last minute change in plans and confides in her father when they meet up later. Her father gives her the brilliant idea to show up at Mark's house in a sexy number to make amends. What a peculiar father-daughter relationship. Ugh. Carly goes along with this idea. She shows up late in the night dressed in a hot number as a sexy plumber, ready to help Mark with his situation. However, she's received by an unexpected guest, Kate. It's here that Kate and Carly have their first encounter. Carly is very surprised to see a woman open the door, but she ends up thinking that Kate is the housekeeper. This all changes when Kate reintroduces herself as Mark's wife. Mortified, Carly leaves the scene as fast as possible to save face, breaking an urn in the process. When she arrives at the office the next day, she destroys the flowers Mark has sent her as an apology for missing dinner the previous night. Carly discloses to Lydia that Mark is a married man and that she'd rather not see him again. Although Lydia doesn't really understand as she doesn't see his marital status as a problem. As fate would have it, Kate tracks Carly and visits her at her workplace so that they can talk because she's a bit suspicious about their encounter. Kate confirms that Mark has been fooling around with Carly, sending her into a panic attack. Worried that she's causing a scene at her office, Carly agrees to tell Kate everything she needs to know about Mark over drinks later that evening. When they do meet up later, Kate has yet another mental breakdown when she finds out that Carly and Mark have done the horizontal tango 50 times. All this while, Kate had quit her job and put off having kids all for Mark's sake. Carly is very direct and gives Kate her two cents on the situation since the two are not friends. She tells her that finding good guys is nearly impossible since you either get bored or worse. They're cheating liars, so whatever she decides to do, it'll all eventually fail. However, Kate finds a certain comfort in Carly's attitude. And so, she goes to her office in the next day with a hangover from hell, to which Carly is clearly annoyed. Kate wants to keep Carly in the loop, but she refuses, saying that she couldn't care less about all of this. Kate is very determined to have someone to talk to about this because she's lonely. After all, the only one she has is her cheating husband. Carly takes pity on her and decides to give her some leeway and listen to her sob story. She invites her into the house for a bite of the meal that Kate has brought. Mark, who's out of town in Miami, is calling Carly incessantly, and Kate is curious as to why she won't answer the phone when he sees this. The two end up drinking and talking about their experiences, even playing dress-up with Carly's wardrobe. The next day, Kate calls Carly to help her figure things out after destroying Mark's office space with a golf club in a fit of rage. Carly goes to Kate's house, where she meets Kate's charming and witty brother, Phil, and they hit it off instantly. Mark is back from his trip and is suspicious about the very noticeable changes in the house. He tells Kate the good news. The business idea she'd come up with has been accepted and they'll get about half a million dollars. He suggests that they go out to dinner to celebrate and in this dreamy scene, Kate momentarily forgets about Mark's infidelity. She calls Carly to seek advice about getting it on with Mark and they end up disagreeing on the situation since Carly thinks it's not a good idea. 
After dinner, they're ready to get their groove on, so Kate goes to freshen up. However, when she comes back out, she sees Mark on a secret phone call and changes her mind, realizing that she's being tricked by his charming attitude once again. Okay guys, quick pause to remind you to comment, like the video, and subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. On with the recap. Carly texts Kate the following day to make amends. Meanwhile, Kate is with Phil in the house working on refurbishing the home office. Kate ends up telling Phil about all the things that have been going on lately, and he suggests that Kate deals first with Carly and then with Mark. Carly calls Kate for a meetup to apologize for her curt behavior, but Kate is feeling confrontational and is not convinced by Carly's apology, which leads to a fight. Kate still thinks that Carly is getting busy with Mark because of the secret phone call, but Carly actually suspects that Mark may be cheating on the two ladies with a third woman. In a twisted turn of events, the two ladies team up to put Mark's behavior to rest. Talking about Mark, he's actually packed and ready for yet another business trip. When he leaves, they follow him together to their holiday home. Clearly, this is not a business trip. They decide to set base at Phil's house nearby, where Phil is very surprised to see how the two are now chummy with each other. While spying on Mark, Kate and Carly finally zero in on Mark's second mistress, Amber, who's much younger than the two of them. Offended by her hot body and looks, Carly ends up running after Amber in a fit of rage, and a wild goose chase starts with Kate in the mix. They end up having a sit-down with Amber, and they tell her about Mark and his unfaithfulness. It turns out that Mark has told Amber that Kate was the one who cheated on him, and that he's going to divorce her, painting Kate as the villain in the story. While Phil and Carly are warming up to each other, Kate and their new guest Amber are having a ball. The two mistresses and the hurt wife now have teamed up with a common goal to put a stop to Mark's behavior. They formed the perfect killing machine, the wife, the lawyer, and the huge tatas. Back home, Mark and Carly go on a date and they patch things up, with Carly saying she hadn't called back because she was upset he would bailed on dinner with her dad. Following the plan, Carly spikes Mike's drink with a laxative, causing him to have a sudden urge to let it all out. The next day, Amber and Carly head out to meet Carly's father to find out more about Mark's mysterious source of revenue. He gives them the idea to look for blind offshore findings in Switzerland or the Bahamas. Meanwhile, we see that Kate has been adding hormones to Mark's morning smoothies, which are causing him to lose his hair and become super sensitive, all according to the plan. However, it looks like although Kate wants revenge, she's still pretty hurt by all of this. One night, Carly finds Kate reminiscing with footage of her wedding day, with her wedding dress on. They're interrupted when Mark gets home earlier than usual. They're very surprised about the situation since he was supposed to be hooking up with Amber, but they manage to not get caught. After investigating some more, Carly and Amber uncover the truth about some of the businesses that Mark has been pretending to invest in to steal money. They finally got him, but Kate doesn't want to deal the final blow because once again she's been swayed by his charms. Turns out that Mark took her to meet up with some board members about her business idea and it was all a success. The trio has a fallout because Kate has second thoughts. However, Carly digs some more and uncovers that Mark has actually been using Kate's signature to defraud the businessmen. When asked, Kate said that she just signed whatever he told her to without really reading it. Carly tells her that this could actually work in her favor because she has the legal power to withdraw all the money. Thereafter, they head out to the Bahamas where all the banks are to get all the cash. Mark gets back into town after returning from yet another trip. Carly sets up a meeting with him at her office and he goes thinking it's going to lead to some steamy action. To his surprise, he finds all three ladies waiting for him in the conference room. They reveal everything to him, including the fact that he now doesn't have a dollar to his name, and to top it off, Kate informs him that she wants a divorce. Carly has also shown the investors evidence of their money being misappropriated. Instead of keeping the laundered money, the girls decide to return the funds and the investors decide to work directly with Kate. It all ends well for the three girls. Kate becomes the CEO of several successful companies, Carly gets together with Phil, and they expect a child together, and Amber and Carly's father unexpectedly find romance. She always did like older men. In a situation like this, how would you get revenge if your partner cheated on you? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next recap. Until next time.